So I'm joined now by the royal butler, Grant Harold. Grant! <laughs> oh, that comes this. So, no, no. it's exciting, this, isn't it? So, um, they somehow, it's got out, mm. that this secret mm. that they're housing and hosting some refugees. Yes, and I mean, when they say something, it's always possible leaks, even when I was there, things mm. used to always kind of leak out. But this is obviously a positive thing, because it's shown that the royal family, everyone says that they live in castles, palaces, you know, they could help so many other people that are that haven't got homes, well, this is actually them doing it. And mm. obviously, the thing is, the, the Crown Estate, the Dutch Estate, they're huge estates. You know, they've got many properties to the portfolio. So it's not difficult for them to say, right, we're going to make some of these homes available for yeah. refugees. And I think it's a really good move. I wonder how many they've got there, though. Well, no. well, that'll be the thing. I don't know if they'll ever actually tell it. You never know. I mean, it, there could be a point they actually suddenly say, this is how many we've taken in and this is what we've done with them. But I don't quite know where, as I say, I'm not exactly sure where they end up. I mean, you've also got Prince Charles's Poundbury, so is it possible that some might be down there? Um, but see, the, the estate is huge and there's many properties Could as you part imagine of that. So. If you're a refugee from Ukraine and the royal family say, we'll take you in, you'd be like, yeah, <laughs> all right. Well, that's the worrying bit. I hope they don't think they're moving into Buckingham Palace or Windsor Castle. Uh, I, who knows? I, I don't see that happening. Uh, because also from a security point of view, mm. they've got to be careful because with the royal family, security is, is very important. So if they have got them within these homes, obviously there's the reality is there's a security risk. Mm. But if it's one of the properties on the estate, that's fine. That's have you, have you seen a lot? You would have seen a lot of these properties on the estate. I have over the years. I have. Mm. Um, I even I even live in um, a, a duchy property. So you know, you I, live I, in a duchy property a duchy even property, now. Yeah, even now. And so, what know, does that mean? The royal family pay for you to live in this house? No, no, I, I'll pay. I'll probably pay them. So what's, that, <laughs> what, what's the what's the, what, the duchy property? What does that mean? It means it's that... basically owned by the duchy. So the duchy kind of pays, uh, if you like, the, the the wage of the, the Prince of Wales, if you like. You know, the, the money that's made from the duchy is what kind of what he uses for himself. And when I was there for the, for the boys and there's obviously a, a huge amount of um, properties mm. one of the funny rules I remember once reading and I don't know if this is true or not but it said that if you live in a duchy property and you died without a will mm. that your contents of your home become part of the, the duchy estate I don't know if that is still true but I think at one time it was so yeah. I, I always say to anybody I know that lives in, in kind of duchy properties <laughs> make sure you've got your will in order so, do you, so you can buy the duchy property no you, you, can, you can well I th you can rent them I don't know it's, it's possible that there is some properties that you can probably buy into um, I'm sure it is possible, but the one that I'm in is obviously just um, is rented. Well, how do you get hold of that, though? Is it because you've been ro working it's, with it's, the royal family? Yeah, or, exactly, or? when you've been with the royal family and, and you get options as well. So when you funny, leave? Yeah, when you leave, yes. Yeah. Can you come back? Will they let you back? Would you want um, to go back? It's, it's a funny one. Yes, I, I, I'm sure. I've heard other members of staff sometimes say they've gone back, but, you know, I think when you've been there, and I mean, I was so lucky with the years that I was there, and, and I know it sounds strange, but I was there when Wayman and Harry were quite young, and, you know, it was, it was great memories. And really? I don't, I don't know how you could re... Um, I think it would be different now because, obviously, they've got their own homes and they've moved out. I think it would be a very different world now. What was, what was your fondest memory of hanging out with Harry and Wills? Um, probably just the fact that they were down to earth, you know, because I remember going in there thinking this is going to be... You know, it's going to be very, very different to my previous job when I worked for the, the Dukes of Bedford. But the reality was, it, w it was fun, it was really good fun. And I remember one of my first conversations with Prince William was, "What, what do I call you?" You know, I said, "You know, what, how do I address you?" And I remember him saying, "My name's William." <laughs> and I thought, "Okay, that's nice and easy." So I was quite lucky. I feel lucky that I was one of the, you know, one of the few that was allowed to call him by his, his first name. And and equally, I feel proud when I see what they've gone on to achieve and and what what. He and, and, and Kate, um, the Duchess of Cambridge, what they've, they've done in the last few years. For a minute there, I thought you were talking about Harry there when he said they, but clearly you, you didn't mean them, you meant Wilson and Kate. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm equally um, proud of what Prince Harry's done, but obviously it's, there's, you know, there's, there's positives and negatives with everything that's happened there, unfortunately.